Hey guys, welcome back to Gribble Space Program with Nitro. In this uh, episode, I'm going to go over a lot of rocket building things, uh, tips and tricks, how to build some more advanced craft. Uh, maybe some things that you might be noticing when you build your rockets, maybe they don't perform as well as you'd like to, or maybe you want to see how to squeeze some more performance out of your craft. Uh, I'm going to go over all that today as well as some of the things that I've been using on a lot of my different ships to make them more efficient. Alright, so starting out here, I just want to go over a basic uh, rocket building kind of thing. So in the pod selection, if you need to transport just one Kerbal, the lightest weight pod really to use is this Mark 1 lander can right here. But if you don't necessarily need the Mark 1 lander can, the lightest weight thing is this little probe core and then what you can do is if you have another ship that attaches to it you can put one of these external command seats right on the top of it like that and then whenever you get your Kerbal and have them uh, hop in the command seat you can pilot this whole thing and this is lighter weight uh, I believe 0.05 yep then uh, just one of these lander cans right here because this has a mass of 0.04 and then this is 0.05 which gives you what 0.09 uh, together and this thing has a mass of 0.6 which is uh, basically six times heavier than one of these so if you want to build a really lightweight efficient one-man craft uh, this is really the way to go uh, however for most other things, you probably want to use uh, the lander can for the majority of your landers, although I am really partial to this large oversized one up here. I use this on my Cobra Mark V. I just like the look of it, and it's got a wider base so you can fit a lot of the bigger parts on it. <coughs> but uh, moving on, one thing I see in a lot of people's craft uh, when they go and make them is I always see people with RCS everywhere. So like, I'll see people that have RCS here, RCS on the sides, you know, and they'll, they'll have all these different RCS components and everything just attached to your craft. And one thing that you need to keep in mind is you do not need RCS for anything unless you are docking your craft to something. Or possibly if it's a humongous craft that's really unwieldy and really hard to control, then you use RCS and space to control it. But other than that, you don't need to have RCS on anything at all unless you're docking it. It's a complete waste of mass and space. You don't need it. So stop putting it on there. Uh, another thing to always remember is whenever you put an SAS system on something, always make sure that you have enough power to operate your SAS system and always make sure uh, that you're not going to run out of power. So like if I had this uh, SAS module on here, one thing that I always like to do is also include a battery and you want a bigger, uh, big enough battery to power everything that you got. And then you also want to be able to recharge that battery, so using thermal electric generators is probably the easiest and most efficient way. And then also you can put solar panels on stuff like that, but I always find that if I put uh, thermal electric generators on something, you press W on your keyboard to rotate it up, and then you can snap them in there just like that. And so they don't really take up any of your space and they're easy to place uh, anywhere you want and it keeps that battery charged. <laughs> and you don't even need to have them on the main part. You can put these things, you know, pretty much anywhere. You can even hide them uh, right there and uh, they're good to go just like that. So they take up virtually no space. Um, another thing to also keep in mind is you want enough landing legs and enough power or when you actually go to land your craft that you don't break the landing legs because now uh, even though we have cushioned landings with these new landing struts that you can put on craft they can break if your craft lands in excess of 10 meters per second on any body. I landed one of my heavier craft at 12 meters per second on Kerbin and it broke just about every single one of these uh, tiny landing legs that I had on it. Uh, so also keep that in mind. Uh, you definitely want to land at under the 10 meter per second mark. I prefer landing at around 7.5. Uh, 
is my uh, mark of choice. Um, all you need for maneuvering a craft in space is your SAS module, especially if you have enough uh, SAS units on your ship, you can maneuver something and it'll be really nimble. Um, what else? What else? So like a lightweight lander can like this, like if I wanted to actually make this into a lander, I would probably have this a small fuel tank right here. Utility, put four of these little landing legs on it, like that. And if I wanted it to land in atmosphere, I would put one of these on top of it. And one of these inner tubes on the bottom just for added fuel. Now one thing that you can do with inner tubes is you can stack these, so you can put inner tubes inside of inner tubes inside of inner tubes, and they're just, there's like two attachment points on everything, like you can see right here. The green balls on the top and bottom are your attachment points, so when I move this thing up here it's attaching the top of this tank to the bottom one of this inner tube, but then if I push it, uh, it's not doing it with the RCS. Let's see, I'll use this can. So if you push it up, you can see how it now attaches the bottom of this can to the top of this inner tube. So now that can is inside of this inner tube, and I can put another one in there, and then I can stack another one uh, to the bottom of it like that, and then put one of these engines on there like this. And that's all you really need for a lightweight lander. These little itty bitty engines, the Rocket Max 48-7S's, are really powerful engines for their thrust to weight ratio and they don't require a whole lot of fuel. So something like this has enough fuel for landings on basically anywhere. Um, well, anybody without atmosphere anyways. I'm pretty confident even this would be able to get up off the ground on, uh, on Kerbin, so let's just go ahead and test it. Alright, so activate our SAS and here we go. Yeah, so just right there you could already see that that little engine on this pod had enough power to lift up this lander can configuration on the surface of Kerbin. So if it can do that on Kerbin, this thing has more than enough power to operate on the moon or Moho or wherever you need to take it. So using these little itty bitty engines can actually be really, really good for you, <clears throat> depending on the size of your lander and how many of these engines you have. So smaller and more powerful is better than big and unwieldy and overly complex is the lesson to take away from this. Alright, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and talk about everyone's favorite thing to do, asparagus staging. So in asparagus staging, if I wanted to asparagus stage this craft and get it into orbit, now I can use a little... I can use these. This will be fine. If I want to use, yeah, I'll go ahead and use that one. Alright, so now we need. Let's just use six. So here's our rocket, this is our vehicle that's going to get this thing up into orbit. And if we wanted to asparagus stage this thing, you want to turn symmetry off. 
then you grab your fuel ducts, and you always want to maintain perfect symmetry when dropping tanks. So the way that you do this is you want the tanks that have, you know, the best symmetry. So when you use a six tank configuration like this, if you look on the top here, you can see that these tanks on the direct top and bottom have the best absolute symmetry to the rest of the craft. So what you do is you take your little fuel duct, if I can find a good spot to put it, and you attach it there. And then you do the same thing with this other one. So now those tanks feed into this one. And now we go around the sides of these, and we can have this tank feed into that one, and then this tank feed into that one. Now on the other side, we do the opposite. We feed that one into that one, and then we feed that one into that one. And there we go, we're all done. Our asparagus staging is all nice and set up. And then you always want to double check your... Well, if you use symmetry, you're going to have to do your uh, decouplers at the right stage. So the first stage it's going to drop is going to be this outer stage here. So that's this one. And this one. So just click on them and then hold control to select uh, another one in the group after you expand them like this. And then the next stage it's going to drop is going to be the next one in line that's attached to. And this one. And there we go. And let's see. This one needs to fire as well. Uh, and that looks good. So now just to be on the safe side, let's go ahead and structurally support this thing. So with that we can turn symmetry back on. And attach it like so. I have the sneaky suspicion that this thing's going to be overly powerful for our purposes, but I don't care. Let's see. There we go. Alright, just so it's nice and structurally supported, uh, that should be fine. for what we need. And staging looks good. This thing's ready to fly. I don't think I'm going to need docking clamps. Yeah, it looks good. Alright, so this is ultra lightweight lander with uh, proper asparagus staging. And here we go.
there we go. We are in orbit with plenty of fuel to spare. Just on that little configuration alone, we do have kind of a wider uh, orbit here. Go ahead and make that bigger. If I don't hit anything. <laughs> there now as we come to the light you can see just how effective that was uh, with true asparagus staging now we have our ultra lightweight craft with plenty of fuel left in this thing it has plenty of power still and if we wanted to return to Kerbin we could and then we still have all the fuel left in this engine which in space is also going to be really efficient and if you use things like the ion engines for a craft like this after you detach this lower fuel pod, this would also be a really efficient craft to use ion engines for. So there you go, that's asparagus staging, that's how to do asparagus staging the right way. This is how all asparagus staging works, and then uh, if you do more tanks on the outside of this, then you would just attach those fuel lines into them, and then the ones that go into these outermost tanks would deplete first, so you just have to set up your staging to accommodate that. And that's really all there is to it. Now, alternatively, you can choose to use an airlifter. So, if I get rid of all this, transfer in one of my airlifter designs here. Now, this is, of course, uh, highly excessive for this craft, but. Um, if you used a smaller version of this, you could have probably one of these smaller engines here with maybe two to four of these uh, airlift engines attached to this thing would probably be sufficient to lift that up into space. Um, and that's another method. So uh, that's the Atlas II airlifter. That's for a lot, much, much heavier craft. Um, Alright, so now that we've done that, we can go over some of the engineering things that you can do. Uh, one nifty thing that I especially like to do, and actually I'll do two times symmetry, is when you have these little, um, what are they called, these, these little girders here, you can attach them in such a way to where you can uh, attach different things to your craft that otherwise wouldn't attach to it. So, for instance, we have some of these Xeon gas tanks, and then if we wanted to attach ion engines, we could, and now we have ion engines attached to this thing. And then also, we would put another girder right here and then probably a solar array like that and so something like this would be able to generate enough power off of these uh, two solar arrays to power these ion engines and if it were flying this little itty bitty lightweight craft, especially if you had a good launcher like the Atlas II that's incredibly excessive or something similar to that, you can fly this lander all the way over to the Jewel system, land on one of the moons, and uh, also be able to get back to Kerbin. So you can do an entire mission out to Jewel with a craft that's this lightweight, be able to land and get back because these ion engines are going to have plenty of fuel with the Xeon gas canisters in there to get back. And even if you found that maybe you needed uh, more Xeon gas for whatever reason, uh, one other thing you can do is put some of these decouplers on here. And then you can always just attach Xeon gas canisters 
directly to the decouplers like this and so when you go to decouple it it'll actually decouple all of these spent xeon gas canisters so that's another option that you have if you don't want to use these larger ones although these do have significantly more fuel uh, so these are 700 compared to the 400 Xeon gas that these would have, but it just depends on how much fuel you need and how lightweight your craft is that you're transporting. Um, also another thing to keep in mind that once you do get further out in the solar system, the solar energy collected by the solar panels and solar rays is going to be significantly less than you'll get around uh, Kerbin or Duna, or probably even Drez. But once you get out to Jewel, it definitely um, is a noticeable difference and you won't be able to power these ion engines as efficiently as you could otherwise. But again, that probably won't really matter because once you get into direct sunlight, you'll have enough power to get all the way back. Um, so this is just one little configuration that can get you out that far. Uh, another nifty thing that you can do with these little girders is you can use them to attach um, decouplers to your ship in a different fashion than just going straight down. And what I mean by that is I'll show you guys here. So by attaching these octagonal struts on here what we can do and you'll have to do this pretty much one at a time is you can grab ah, there we go uh, some of these other things so let's see if we wanted to put a propulsion tank or something like that on here now we can so we can just start mounting tanks everywhere we want onto this thing like this with uh, these little engines if we wanted to. And let's see. Just to give you guys a example idea here. So uh, if you had something like this, you would make one of these engines on the side here, and then you can grab this thing, the octagonal one, and then push it in, and that snaps it to that inside bracket on uh, this little strut. And so then what you do is hold Alt, click, and then you just want to hold down the Shift key and press E to rotate until you get your desired angle snap the other one in there like this. And as long as you use symmetry on the initial four struts that you have here, this whole thing will be symmetrical so you don't have to worry about uh, the placement. So you can do something like that. And then if you had uh, more of these, I mean, you know, you can go up to eight times symmetry on something like this, and then you could also asparagus stage these. And that's how I wound up making my current design for my Eve lander using a configuration like this. So you can get a lot of power out of uh, these little itty bitty engines attached to smaller fuel tanks and stuff like this to the point where you really wouldn't even need this bottom part, but uh, if you wanted to keep it, that's fine. Um, but just a lightweight craft like this, this thing right here could probably get uh, all the way into orbit. Maybe. I think it has enough fuel, not sure about the power of this thing. If I attach solid boosters onto it, then it definitely would. Alright, so let's show a more advanced design of this. I'll show you guys my current Eve lander that I have.
Alright, so here it is attached to my air lifter that I used to get it up into orbit. But we can get rid of all that nonsense. Alright, so here's the lander. And it just has a little command seat up on top of here, as well as some little parachutes mounted on top of the uh, smaller fuel cans. And I also have big parachutes on the side for the heavier sections, and it's all strutted together and pretty much bicycled onto this thing. And this thing has a whole lot of power. Um, the center tank here is actually a slack tank that doesn't have any propulsion to it, but it feeds fuel into all of these other tanks all at the same time. So that's what all these fuel lines are all going to the outer tanks. The top part here is asparagus together with all of these uh, other outer ones. So this is something that I believe will have no problem landing on EVE and also getting off EVE and back into orbit. So, and just to show that, I'll show you guys a test flight. Uh, let's go ahead and put a Kerbal in there too, because uh, we, we need a Kerbal. So we'll put Jeb in this one. go. And let's find this one. Alright, good enough. And let's just go ahead and do a daytime launch. All right. So now, let me get Jib out of his little pod here. Oops. Come on, Jib. There we go. All righty. Switch back and let's deploy the ladders. Alright, so you can already see those already go down and into the ground, and then all these landing legs are, of course, capable of landing this thing. And all the parachutes allow it to land uh, at, I think, 7 meters per second. And because of all the struts that we have on here, we don't have to worry about this thing breaking apart under that impact load either. So here we go, this is uh, another test flight.
And there we go. We have an orbit of Kerbin with plenty of fuel to spare. And again, the center tank still has a full amount of fuel in it because it's getting fuel supply from these outer tanks here. Uh, so let's see. Here we go. Go ahead and orient jib like this. So this is uh, my current EVE lander design that I was working with. I do intend on taking this to EVE and doing another mission there, landing on the surface and getting jib back off the surface uh, in this lander. The docking port on the bottom that you originally saw uh, as part of the lower stage is one I use to dock my transfer vehicle to to get him all the way over to EVE. So I'm currently working on that. Uh, but this is a pretty nifty little craft. Um, lots of power for the amount of fuel consumption that these little engines have. And it's very efficient. So uh, doing design configurations like this is super lightweight, has a lot of power, and you have plenty of fuel for tiny engines like this in order to uh, get it up into orbit and do everything that you need to do. So, good stuff. Alright, so now we've done that. Let's load another craft with more complex parts and talk about it. The, the Papa Dragon has issues. <laughs> I'll move my Mark II. So, this is my Mark II design of the Papa Dragon that I was working on, and probably what I'm going to use to transfer Jeb out to Eve. I uh, use this uh, configuration in my Moho mission, but I felt I'd just go back and uh, bring it up again. So, uh, this is an airlifter attached to the bottom of it here. They'll detach, but really, the, uh, the whole design on the middle is I have some ion engines to help with maneuvering and whatnot, and but this large tank here transfers fuel to all of these outer uh, nuclear engines on these silos, and then these smaller engines with the 50 power rockets are for orbital inclination burns mainly. But I'll probably be using them a little differently. The whole craft can be refueled with the docking port up here on the top, and uh, I think what I'll also wind up doing is bringing in my airlifter, or not my airlifter, but bringing in the, uh, the EVE lander and just docking it to the top of the secondary lander. So uh, I might use this first lander to first land on the surface and then drop the second lander, or I might just have Jib land in the, the first lander. I don't know. Uh, if I took this thing off, I don't think there would be enough clearance with the rest of these uh, engines over here to actually sit it down on the nose, so I would have to make another part and bring it up more, but I already have one in space, so if I can uh, get this thing up into orbit a little bit more efficiently and then dock it uh, to that docking port, then we should be good. Other things to go over. Let's see. Gagarin Station I did. Oh yeah, Nitro Express. I'm currently working on a atmospheric drop uh, box for my rover that I want to send out to Duna. So this is that. And there's a rover inside this box here, but essentially it's going to be able to fly out to doing with the power of all these nuclear engines, and then after it detaches from here, the uh, the smaller engines on the bottom are going to help pilot it and orbit it to exactly where I want for the landing zone. And then once it actually enters the atmosphere, all the parachutes are going to deploy, and then once we get to a low enough altitude, 
there's actually a docking clamp on the bottom here that uh, will wind up actually no the uh, it's gonna come in head first and then this docking clamp on the bottom is gonna release which releases all of the bottom and then the craft is going to flip over because these are gonna be providing all the drag and then once we get to a low enough altitude, that docking clamp will release, and then the landing parachutes on the actual rover itself will help guide it down to the surface. And then I do have an unmanned little uh, probe core pod right here to help it uh, move without the aid of the kerbals actually inside of it. And then it has landing legs on the bottom here that it can use to land on the surface. So. Uh, I also have some tiny engines set up on the inside of it, so when this thing actually detaches, it basically cuts the box in half, and these engines are going to rocket the, uh, the bottom portion away from the craft. So I think what I'm going to do is when it comes in, I'll cut the chutes, and then fire the bottom out, and then when this thing rotates back upright, then I'll detach the top portion and then use these chutes. So, kind of complex. Um, hope it works. It's sandwiched in there pretty good, so I don't think the rover is really going to move or have much problem. Everything is attached nice and properly. Uh, I just don't know if my lifter will have enough power to get it into space. I just have to get this, uh, <laughs> this top part into space. So. Uh, another thing that you can do if you have uh, anything that uses these boxes, one thing that I found is you can use the docking clamps, and I like to use the blue ones for this, but if you rotate them, you have a port on each one of these plates. So you can put three along here, plus one here, even if you wanted to, and then you can attach one of these to the plate and then you can put your propulsion engines on the bottom or you can do a uh, different configuration but basically when you jettison these they just slide right down off the box they don't leave any debris so if you need to attach extra stuff to the top of the box for propulsion purposes you can um, so that's one thing you can do. I haven't tested a whole lot of configurations with this. I only used it on my uh, docking station. So if I wanted to recreate something like this, I guess the best thing to do really would be to use one of these docking clamps, or closed ports, I guess they are, I'm not real sure. And then you can put, you know, your fuel silo on top of that, uh, depending on whether or not how good the clearance is for the parachutes, but that's one option you have. Um, I think another thing that might also work is having a strut there. Something that might be a little easier to attach things to. Something like that. With your uh, with your tank on there. So you got options as far as how you can uh, decide to build it, but whenever you fire this thing up, it'll provide equal thrust around the whole outside portion of this box, and then it'll, you'll get more efficiency out of your lower engines, and then when you go to jettison this whole thing, this whole part will come off and fly away. So uh, that's one thing I might have to do for this, but other than that, it looks good. Um, with the struts, you don't really need to overdo it with the struts if you have just one on the bottom one on the top and maybe if it's too long put one on the middle and you're pretty much good to go for bicycling uh, your stuff together with duct tape. Uh, so that's another design feature. If you're looking how to transport rovers to other planets, something uh, having a box or something like that is uh, helpful I think. Um, let's see. 
head and engine design. I don't know if I still have it. I don't think I do. I don't. It's going. That's okay. Uh, some things can get a little crazy. Like this uh, RRTS is absolutely insane for what I had to do there. To get a large craft into orbit like this, and it was completely unwieldy and ridiculous. But I did some weird asparagus staging with it. <laughs> I had to do it in such an odd way to get equal thrust around the whole uh, portion of this ring. So this thing is a bit insane, but basically, <laughs> this whole bottom section here is the is the launch craft as well as orbital craft. I know the RCS is insane, but I needed it to help pilot this thing because the SAS alone just would not do it. And it's basically you get this entire ring thing into space with also the bottom portion of the station. So, if you're doing asparagus staging, this is kind of a horizontal um, asparagus staging approach. I don't recommend doing this for anything unless you have a humongous vessel uh, like this that you need to get up into orbit. And even this thing is uh, just absolutely ridiculous. But I did use uh, those sideways clamps attached to docking ports to actually get this thing to work properly. And then strutted it all together in weird and interesting ways, but it worked. <laughs> so, I uh, don't recommend uh, anything like this, but this is kind of a weird way to do asparagus staging. Um, as these outer whole tanks deplete here, you drop that section off, and then you do your next section, basically. So. Same method, just a different approach for a larger vehicle. Um, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Let's see, transfer pod. I guess I can load in my transfer pod too. So this is the little pod that I have attached to my Gagarin station, and its only job is to go down to the surface of Duna and get back up and reattach with the with the main station. So uh, on something like this, I wanted to be able to carry two Kerbals, so I have a Kerbal that can fit in the top pod and one in the lower pod, and then it just lands right on the surface and there's low enough gravity to where if they need to jump to get back up inside the pod they can, so I didn't need to add any extra ladders. And it has the uh, solar panels on the side to help keep it charged uh, at all times, so it's got plenty of power. All the parachutes will provide uh, enough drag to stop the thing, and even if I need to do rocket-assisted landing, all these rockets attached to these tanks have more than enough power to stop it. And then again, I also have the tiny engines attached to the bottom of these larger tanks, and uh, the RCS on this craft is actually warranted because we're going to be redocking this thing with our space station in orbit, so it actually needs RCS in it. Uh, but this is just the basic transfer pod design that I attach to the Gagarin station. And so if you wanted to see the Gagarin station again, I'll load that one up. So here's the Gagarin station. Um, the the side parts aren't really necessary. These are just uh, escape pods <laughs> in case of emergency. Uh, didn't really need them, but they look cool. They do serve a purpose. Uh, multiple docking ports on the side. If you do ever make thing or something that needs to attach it to docking ports at once, you want to have a way of measuring it. Otherwise, it's really hard to line up the docking ports properly. 
because you'll be just barely off by just a few centimeters and it just it won't fit together properly when you go to dock it in orbit. So do keep that in mind. Uh, but that's the Gagarin station. And then also our Duna Command Center. Use the airlift approach. And this is actually the one where I was using my, my new method of interplanetary travel and engine refit that I'll probably wind up doing again. So if you haven't seen the video already on the Atlas uh, 2 or 3 rocket that I posted on YouTube, here is a better example of how airlifters can be effective for um, lifting large craft into space. So I have a lot of jet engines on this thing, and you fire those up and then you have your main burn engines attached to that. And then you have your orbital engines attached to those. And once this thing actually gets into orbit, you undock everything from the docking ports, and then you can dock your new engine to the station and then transfer it out to wherever it is that you need to go. So, this is that design. Um, I really like it because I figured out a way to actually make uh, docking ports on the bottom useful and you can launch up a new engine and attach whatever engine you want to it. So, I think I called it engine... engine refit or refit engine? Or refit engine, there it is. Alright, so here's the refit engine on the airlifter, and it does have an unmanned pod on it. And what you would do with something like this is you launch it up into orbit, and then you can use the RCS to dock this thing to the bottom of anything that has an equivalent docking port. And what you can do is you can always just swap out this uh, lower engine here for any size engine that you need. So, it does work out uh, pretty good that way. I use this for the nuclear engines, but if you want to use it for bigger, uh, heavier engines, you can do that as well. I guess if you really want to, you could have the, you know, the 215s, even a 650 or 1500, but uh, with this much fuel, you probably won't get a whole lot of efficiency out of it, so this was just mainly made primarily for efficiency purposes. So this is that design and if you always needed to attach it to something else you can take one of these smaller sections here after removing that top one and then just place your docking port on top of that. So you can make the same engine fit with uh, another craft with uh, the same design, all you have to do is add on just like a, a fit for it. And that's all there is to it. Um, so if we go and make a new craft, uh, let's see, another thing to keep in mind when making spaceships and especially when you're building landers is you want to make the lander uh, outfitted for the mission that you uh, that you want to achieve. So if you want to land more than one Kerbal, you gotta have more than one more than one pod on the lander, and in some cases you can also use this larger one for uh, landing pods. I never really liked using it for that. I usually like having this as my main ship uh, pod. But uh, if you attach something like the lander can, and then put this pod on top of it. That's always a good configuration to use, depending on uh, what your engine layout is. And again, the the engines, depending on if you want to reuse them or not, you can use fixed struts. 
So I always like putting fixed struts on anything that I intend to reuse that isn't a one-time use vessel, otherwise uh, I would use these uh, structural pylons because these things have the ability to decouple and so you can get a distance out of them and still also be able to decouple them. Uh, when you have the struts on there like that, these engines fit nicely on the sides of it like this, and then all you need are these tiny engines, and you're good to go. This thing will have enough power to land on the moon and get back into orbit and do everything you want to do with a two kerbal capacity, uh, but you always want to have battery power and landing lays and everything like that on there, so... This would, this would be the ideal design. So, something like this. So there's your lander. And that's all you really need. There's no reason to build big, excessive landers with lots of power unless they need to land on something like Duna. And even then, uh, smaller is better when you look at your fuel consumption uh, versus what kind of load you're trying to drop on the surface now. In campaign mode, this is going to be a little different because you have all these science components that you have to consider that you carry along with you. So you got that, you got your goo, you know, however much you want to carry with you, you have to make a craft that has enough power to carry all the extra weight. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you have crafts that fly apart, uh, one possible reason is that you don't have um, fuel consumption going the right way. So, for instance, uh, one mistake people often make is they want to use fuel evenly from all tanks. So they'll do something like this. But this creates a loop. And whenever you create a loop with the fuel system, it drains fuel from the takes uh, asymmetrically. It doesn't ever really work. So just go with the simple asparagus staging. Don't ever have fuel going in any kind of loop. Otherwise, it just won't work. Um, yeah, so that's that lander design. Not really a real lander. Uh, but something like my Cobra Mark V has a bit more power for what it needs to do, but also it has enough fuel to return from the moon and get all the way back to Kerbin. If I wanted it to. So this is the original uh, design for that. I think I did actually change it up when I added these extra fuel silos on here. I don't know why I did that. I need to to update this and change those. Right. But uh, this thing can be redocked with the main part of the craft now. I think this is the new one that I have up for download. And I put a lot more SAS systems on it because I wanted this thing to handle well while it was taking off from Kerbin. And then I also have an unmanned pod here because whenever you undock something from another ship, if your lander was the first part you made on your ship, then it registers everything else as debris. And so the way to fix that is to start out either with your main ship, or if you are making your main ship, make sure that you have another pod part attached to it. So something that's unmanned or uh, another can or something, just so it knows that your piece isn't debris is one thing to keep in mind. Uh, this is my favorite little lander. I just like it because, you know, it looks cool, it performs well on uh, different planets, lands nicely, and I know I can get back into orbit easily. So uh, that's why I designed this one the way I did. Working on another one now, kind of like a all-in-one prototype kind of lander. But I haven't really gotten done with that one yet. So, let's see. Prototype. Yeah, 
enhanced. This is it so far. I was just trying to make something a little bit more crazy with the use of ion engines on the bottom. So I got four mounted onto the strut. Then I have their fuel and everything on the inside of the strut there. So that's kind of what I was thinking of for something like this. Not really sure if this thing will work or will work well, but I do want to use uh, the large amount of fuel for these outer tanks, everything like that. Uh, so this is the design I'm working with. Uh, I don't think the lifter will get it all the way up in the space yet, but if it does, great. I think that, yeah. So with the crew capacity on this thing, if I wanted to have just one Kerbal, I could. If I wanted to have four, I could have four. Or I could put three in the other pod and leave this lander can empty. So I have a couple different options with it. And because it does have a large docking port on the bottom, uh, once this bottom portion runs out, I can always reattach another engine to the exact same lander can. So. That's that idea. Uh, I don't, haven't really tested this thing in the field yet, but uh, should work. <laughs> but just some design ideas for you guys. Uh, using docking ports effectively to dock new engines to your craft or refuel it is always something you want to be able to do. And something I try to do on a lot of the craft designs I have now. But the main thing that I really just wanted to share with your uh, spacecraft construction is with this EVE lander, you can get a lot of power out of a lightweight craft and it doesn't have to be this tall and wieldy thing. You can have something small and compact that gets the job done. But if you want to build larger, uh, more impressive craft, especially ones for interplanetary travel or going to multiple worlds, uh, with a large load of kerbals, then just make sure you have the lander attached to it for, to get the job done and probably carry around uh, enough docking sections to actually get those things on there. Uh, but this is just my working model. I will send it to Eve soon and get back into orbit around Eve. I already like the results that I had here on Kerbin, so I'm pretty happy with what I saw so far. And hopefully this thing will get the job done and get Jib back in orbit. But that's advanced spacecraft construction. So again, this is the airlifter design that I made and developed. Uh, if you did wind up doing an asparagus staging for these smaller rockets on here, you'd probably get a little bit more efficiency out of it, but it's not really necessary. It, uh, it performs well as is, so uh, I, I, I like the current lift design, lifter design, but for this one I did have to add a little bit more fuel uh, to get that thing to orbit, as I guess this upper craft is a little heavy for uh, just for these jet engines, because I do have the turbo jets on here instead of the the regular jet engines. If I swapped all these out for the regular jet engines, then I probably wouldn't have that problem. And then I could always uh, reduce the amount of fuel in these things because this is an excessive amount of fuel for uh, what we're doing. But overall, it works well. So I got this thing up into orbit with this design right here, which is really all I needed to do. So as long as that mission was accomplished, uh, that turns out well. Uh, if you're landing craft on worlds and you don't need to keep your parachutes, you can always use a design like uh, this here with these octagonal struts. And then in the utilities, you can put your parachutes on the outer end of these struts uh, on the sides and then jettison your parachutes off your craft just to save on the weight. Because these do have massive, you know, 0.3 each. And the smaller ones have, was that massive 0.1, so uh, these are a little bit better option if you're able to use the small ones and get your craft to land properly. I did have these uh, radial ones, but 
I needed them to actually make the craft land softly on the surface and not break any of the landing struts because that's a big problem on EVE is whenever you go in for landing uh, the intense gravity can tend to break the struts on your lander. Uh, so just some craft ideas for you guys. Hope you guys like the uh, designs and uh, stuff that I shared with you here. Hopefully you find this inspirational for building some of your craft and improving them. Uh, remember, you don't need RCS unless you're doing docking and always make sure that you have your fuel lines going the right way on your craft otherwise you'll run into problems so i demonstrated how to do it properly here in the video so hopefully that solves any issues that you have um, if your craft is unwieldy always make sure to add enough sas systems to it like here on this one you can see i have the sas module here on the middle and then i also have another one here on top. So uh, both components of the craft have enough SAS to uh, work properly and I can easily control it without any RCS uh, use at all. So that's that, hope you guys liked it, and ask any questions you have for spacecraft construction in the comments below. See you guys next time.